This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. This is the man, the myth, the legend that is Ira Winderman, ready to rock and roll with us. How you doing, Ira? How you feeling? I'm doing good. Actually, looking forward to Game Five of the Finals. Uh, all while watching with the thought of when I watch the Warriors, realizing this is a team that he could have competed with and could have contended with. Because for all my concerns about being outscored by the Warriors, they can't score except for Steph. So. I think the more I watch this series, the more I feel maybe it was an opportunity that got away, Big O. Yeah, or, or I mean, who knows what happens in a different environment in Miami or whatever, but I almost feel like it. they're due also. I almost feel like Poole and, man, Draymond looked like he was completely out of sorts the other night. Uh, he he couldn't even handle the ball, make the right passes. I mean, it was it was like... It was like all this crap that has built up from the podcast and everything has kind of gotten to him a little bit, but I, I almost feel like they're due, and that's why I, uh, tonight I, I I went with my my liquor split matchup of the night. I, I laid the three and a half points. I think they're due. I think this is the night where the the role players and everybody kind of comes together, and uh, besides Steph, of course, and and they get it done. I think that happens tonight because they are due. It, it's been a mess around Steph. Yeah, you know, but that's the thing is, I, I think the thing, the mistake I made was they have a lot of guys, but they have not done it all together this season. So in other words, when Jordan Poole was scoring a lot, Clay was out. When right. you had Wiggins becoming an all-star, Clay was out, Draymond was injured. So I, when I sort of looked at the collective of the Warriors, they said, well, Steph can score and Clay can score and, and, and uh, Poole is going to score and Wiggins will score. But this team has been so fragmented because of injuries and absences that when they're all together, someone obviously doesn't get their points when Steph is dominating the ball and doing like he's doing. Big O, I never would have thought an issue with the Warriors would have been scoring and getting enough points. It just shows you how you can have individuals, but collectively as a team, it is different. It is a little bit different than I would have anticipated. No, I'm with you. And listen, you can tell Clay is not what he used to be. And I don't know, and I don't know if he's ever going to get back to what he used to be because it's already it was a couple of serious injuries, you know. Still good, but he's not that Clay Thompson that we were spoiled with his first few years. Yeah, but you know what, Big O, he's also missed so much time that I think there is a ramp back up. That this is his first season back in really three years, and yes, he had half a season, but he hasn't had playoff level challenges now in almost three years. So. I think he's getting back to that. He's certainly young enough that he can regain his stride. I think the mistake we all made was expecting it immediately. And I was as off as anyone on that. So I can understand why you would think there does need to be more. I think with more time, he'll be fine. I think the Warriors in the long term are right back at the top of the Western Conference. I'm just not so sure in this series they're back at the top of the league. Matter of fact, I would put it this way, Big O. I think the Warriors are more of a clear-cut favorite in the West for next season than any team is in the East for next season. I, I, I'm with you there. Now, here's the here's the one counter that I would have on the Warriors' struggles. Can the Heat play the, the defense that the Celtics are playing right now? I think because that, yeah, I think they can. That, that's because that, let, let's credit the Celtics also for why the Warriors are what they are right now and how they're struggling. Because it's not like it's every shot is open. You know, the, the the Celtics are doing a good job of defending, too. Yeah, and half the games that he played against the Celtics, they did the same thing. So I don't think that's a concern. As a matter of fact, I was watching this series and thinking about something you and I spoke about on many of our accurate Pembroke Pines reports, how when he can focus in on a single player, they are so much better. So we saw that in the first round, they took Trey Young completely out of what Trey Young does. In the second round, they very much reduced what James Harden does. But when they got to the Celtics, the Celtics had Jalen Brown in one place. They had Jason Tatum in another and was a little bit different. So my thought is, now that you're playing the Warriors, I think they could have used that Trey Young-type defense on Steph Curry and basically dared anyone else to score. When I first looked at the Warriors, I said, no, there's going to be three or four options. They can't cover everything. I think if you smother Steph, you can smother the Warriors as they're constituted right now. Well, we'll see. What, what do you, who do you like tonight? But all that said, I still like the Warriors because I still, I still think, you know what? 
The Celtics, for me, are so wobbly. That's why what I said is I could see the Warriors being more of a favorite in the West next season than anyone in the East. The Celtics are good. When the Celtics are at their best, they're very, very good. When the Celtics are not at their best, they're a team. So right now, I'm not so sure next season, I could tell you definitively, Big O, on our accurate Pembroke Pines report, that I think that the Celtics next season will be better than the Bucks, or better than the Sixers, or better than the Heat. And you know where I always go with this, or better than Brooklyn. I just don't know because they're two Celtics. But the one right. thing I have not seen except for the first round is the consistent Celtics. I've seen consistent Steph Curry. That's what has me encouraged about the Warriors. I've seen such an inconsistent Boston team. It's like they don't appreciate how good they are at their best, so they throw in a stinker every now and then. So, yes, when they're coming off a loss, they have been great in these playoffs. But I think at a certain point, a normal seed will return, home court will matter. The Boston Celtics half the time are a great team. The other half the time, they're a team. Well, listen, in the end, that's what kind of frustrates, you know, Heat fans that they didn't that Butler didn't have that extra guy to kind of get them over the top. And then the Celtic fans have been kind of frustrated over the years that those guys weren't getting over the yes. hump and they finally got over the hump now. You know, in the end, I, I know that we start off the conversation that maybe that he could have had these these warriors until they find that second guy to help out Jimmy. They're not going to put themselves in that position because now we're asking Jimmy Butler to carry you all the way through the end. And I think that's just not fair to him because he's not that kind of player that dynamically, offensively, he can actually do what Magic did you know, for the Lakers as a rookie when he played center and he had to fill in and all that kind of stuff. It, it just becomes a little bit too much for the Heat right now to be in this position until they find that star. And yet, Big O, when you look even at that series against Boston, you would agree that Bam had two terrific games, 31-point game in oh, game yeah. three. He was Definitely. very strong in the finish in game seven also with his yes, 25. great. So more. if you would have had a healthy hero and a healthy Lowry, my cocktail for the Heat winning that series would have been Jimmy has to be great all the time in four games. I get that. Bam yeah. will give you two games as his Robin. Kyle Lowry give you one. Tyler Hero give you one if they were healthy. That would have been the Heat's cocktail. But again, it's like in any sport, you have to be healthy and right at the finish or else you wind up in trouble. With Tyler injured, with Kyle injured, they simply couldn't get to that place. They say all the right things. What are you hearing inside that building? Is Tyler one of the main pieces that are going to be available to, to try to acquire a whale? Or do they think that Tyler can turn into some kind of a little whale next to Jimmy Butler? Well, here's your aggregational moment. You can put this out on your Twitter. Tyler Hero absolutely will be out there and will be mentioned and will be shopped, but not for anything necessarily to do with Tyler Hero. Like I wrote on my Sunday column with the Sun Sentinel, he's their only chip. He's, in other words, Big O, you're the general manager of 29 teams, which you've always wanted to be. If you're oh, calling yeah. the Heat, let me ask you, because you have to also have a certain logic about it. So if you're calling the Heat as an outside GM and you're trying to gauge trade prospects, you know they're not trading Jimmy. You know they're not trading Bam. You know they can't trade Kyle. So who the hell else are you calling unless oh, no, you're yeah. starting your discussion with Tyler Hero? Yeah, Tyler and Bam and, and first-rounders are the – the, the buffet that's on the table for the trade. Not Bam. I don't think Bam. I think Tyler and Duncan no, no. Robinson's contract. Did I say Bam? No, yes, Tyler. Bam. No, no. Tyler, um, Duncan, and first yes. rounders are, yes. and, and, are the and, buffet. And, and that's absolutely. That, that's, that's the menu. That's the offer. So, again, we're going to hear all this stuff about the Heat are involved in, in trade talks regarding Tyler Hero. Just take out the Tyler Hero. The Heat are involved in trade talks. Well, if there's substantive trade talks, you have to offer something to get something. The Heat will not be talking about Tyler Hero from a position of weakness. They will be talking about Tyler Hero if you want the 2022 NBA Sixth Man of the Year. Tell us what you're willing to offer. Tell us you're willing to take on Duncan Robinson's contract. You give us the sweetener. Who's the player you're talking about? That's where it all starts. So you will see it aggregated everywhere heat shopping tyler hero no heat listening for trade talks knowing that tyler hero is the one being shopped this is not a year ago when anyone questioning work ethic or focus or anything like that or instagram models or his personal life this is simple nba talk 
that you, Orlando Alzagari, is GM of 29 other teams. When you call the Heat, this is what you talk about. You talk about right. something that's gettable versus something that's fantasy. Um, you gave us the name uh, John Collins uh, last week from Atlanta as one of those wild cards out there because everybody talks about Donovan Mitchell and Bradley Beal and and uh, Dane Lillard, Lillard and uh, and uh, what's uh, uh, what's the um, the kid from Chicago? Uh, um, Zach Levine. Levine. Zach Levine. All right, so you've had a couple of extra days. Any other names are popping up that could be? And I see Aiton is is being shopped around now. That that's one guy that people are talking about. Not that Miami would be interested in him, but anybody else out there? Again, to me, it's the second tier guys, and it's a name I've mentioned. There was a story in the Indianapolis News today about Malcolm Brogdon about how they're looking to go in a different direction of point guard. He's missed so much time. A guy can score. A guy can defend. Give you something. Is injured a lot. Has yeah, not. I'm, I'm, a lot I'm with Clay. I'm with Clay on that one. I, I saw Clay answer that one. That I'm going for a whale. If I fail for the whale, then yeah, maybe I'll look into Brogdon. And that, you know what? And, and I don't yeah. know how often you get your whale, no matter how sharp your harpoons are. Three years ago, you got Jimmy Butler. Last year, you got Kyle Lowry. Say what you want about Kyle. That was one of the biggest moves of last summer. It just was. However, it played out. It was so a whale move, to... and he looked like a whale. It's. I mean, yeah, Low everything about Lowry was whalish. All right, now you get that harpoon, you fillet a little off the sides, and you'll be just fine, right? They they bring the nice piece of fish. Now, now, say, now, now, Burger King should actually hire Kyle Lowry to be the spokesman so they can bring back the whaler. There we go. Wow, you've, you've just dated yourself there because I can't recall I the last time Burger King's had a fish sandwich. So God bless you, big O, right there. The whaler, I, baby. I, I, I think Kyle's going to head in the right direction. You know what? If you have a degree of pride, and after what Pat Riley said last week, I think you move in that direction. And I think Kyle will. He realizes how much it matters. And I think he wants to do right by his friend Jimmy Butler as well. So Better. I will take Kyle on that, and we'll see what it looks like closer to training camp. Yeah, I hope so, man. All right, good stuff as always. What are you working on the Sun Sentinel here in the off yeah, Hey, you know what? We're turning to for... one of your favorite things, returning to the draft. So I spoke to Adam Simon, who runs the Heat Draft now. He took over from Chet Kammerer about how they're getting ready and how just how odd it was that here they were sort of mourning the end of the playoff run, and boom, they had six candidates up in the gym the next day. They're working them through. They've done everything. They're drafting a 27. They don't have a second-round pick. They had to give that up for Kyle Lowry because they jumped the gun, the league said. But we know the Heat are the kings of number 61, guys who go undrafted. Well, this year there's only 58 picks because both the Heat and the Bulls had a forfeit. Actually, the Heat and the Bucks in this year's draft had a forfeit a second-round pick. So there will be plenty of names. It will make Summer League, when you're out there in Vegas with us, very interesting. They should have a good summer roster. But no radio it's all low, for the man. draft right now. And it's a matter no of – Excuse me? No radio row. Sucks. You know what? We'll find a place. No, oh, no, I'm, I'm, no. We have Tommy Rockers. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about finding a place. We have a place. I already talked to Tommy. We're going, we're going to be at Tommy Rockers, but well, it's we, like we will... it, it's got, it's gotten. Well, you know what? Maybe there's not enough crazy nutbags like myself that want to go out there and cover it. Like radio stations aren't going to cover that. Now that I think about it, you know what I mean. It's kind of, it's kind of odd to have a radio row, but I, man, it's such a big event. No, you know, no, it is, and, and you'll see what it's like between the two arenas, Thomas and Mack Center there, yeah. and, and the smaller gym at the Cox Pavilion. It's constant sort of, you know, movement of players. You get to see so many guys, and it's also almost like the guys who come in back from the team and who wind up there, so make sure you bring your tape recorder. You might wind up with some good interviews there also, but again, the Heat will be working the draft now. The question is, are they drafting for themselves? Will they draft for another team, or are they just going to pick up an asset they're going to flip? Remember, the right. Heat's last first-round pick, Precious Achua, was here 10 total months. They got something right. out of him. So for me, I always step back a little when I talk about the draft, but it's always an interesting process. Adam Simon says, he said that today in the SunSentinel.com and tomorrow's paper at your doorstep, there will be quality there for the Heat at number 27. It's a good power forward draft. The Heat, if they don't bring or P.J. Tucker opts out, at the time of the draft, they might have no power forwards. So I think it'll be interesting to look in that direction as well, Big O. All right, so we'll wrap up with this with Ira Winderman and our Acura Pembroke Pines Miami Heat and NBA report. If you had to put a percentage point on it from 10% to 100%, 
What is the percentages in your mind, in your gut, that tell you the Miami Heat will acquire that other Batman, Robin, whale, whatever it is that Jimmy needs next to him next season? I think it's about 50% that they go out there and try to get an upgrade for their starting lineup. And this is not to detract from Max Drews, who I wrote about yesterday at the Sun Sentinel, but if they can upgrade that lineup with one more NBA scoring threat, I think they will. Again, will it have to come at the cost of Tyler Hero? I don't know. But I think they need to upgrade with more of an NBA tried and true veteran kind of player. So I'd say 50% on my level. But again, that's the Malcolm Brogdon level. On your level, hey, you know what? You can always be hopeful, but I think it's that much harder. And they are limited in assets. It all comes down to there. What's the perceived outside value of Tyler Hero? I'm going to go 80%, man. I think Riley knows... I think Riley knows that the window is so small with with Jimmy and and that body that he can't go more than another year or two without that other guy because then the, the, the bottom's going to completely fall out. I think he makes that move this offseason. I say there's an 80% chance that he makes that move because that, that the championship window is there if you get that other guy. And I think he's, he's going to trade Tyler and Duncan – and, you know, and as much as I hated, like you, th- you threw Gabe at me on besides the first rounders. And I was like, man, I got an old and overweight guard. Uh, I want to keep Gabe. Uh, yeah, it might be Gabe or it might be not Struis, but uh, but maybe a uh, um, you know, yeah, yeah Yurtsevin or something like that. Although I'm really intrigued to see Yurtsevin in the summer. League, man. Uh, yeah, that's that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But I think he knows that that window is really small and he has to take advantage of it. We'll see. We'll see. It'll be fun. Follow him on Twitter at Ira Heat Beat and catch him twice a week doing his thing here with the Acre Broke Pines, Miami Heat, and NBA Report. Ira, as always, thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. Talk to you Wednesday. Talk to you Friday. Thank you, Big O. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Uh, and- this is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.